All right, 2021 Formula E New York City E Pre event. Uh, well, let's get going, shall we? Get nine days to uh, get started. Initiate the five day countdown, as you can see in the intro splash screen there. And for this account, uh, Rocket Venture, right? Because I've already race this car this team a couple of times in the previous or currently ongoing um, time trial competitions so the driver has a few extra uh, XP not that much but still better than none so we'll just uh, keep on running with it so of course it is the the bottom tier PR team 55.8 so in uh, this case my target or the PR requirement to complete this New York e -Pre is going to be 62.6 the lower one right as opposed to 62.7 for the mid-tier teams or 62.8 for the high tier teams right all right so we'll continue with the Designated driver, the Frenchman, Norman Nato. Yes, Nato. And the uh, tuning setup. Of course, tuning setup for unique race conditions. Blah, 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 blah. Narrow streets and tight hairpins. So focus on grip and braking. Right. Look at that. Nine tuning setups available available for braking and eight tuning setups for suspension which deals of course with the grip not so much on top speed uh, acceleration a little bit more so perhaps the mid-tier teams their strength does get accentuated with this uh, tuning setup if you max it out especially so something to keep in mind and if you're going with the top tier uh, PR 58 base PR 58 team then this uh, tuning setup will kind of uh, supplement a deficit that car may have so it's and become overall more balanced so yeah it's like matter of do you all in on a particular aspect of the car's strength or do you kind of spread out the uh, the advantage across all aspects of racing something to keep in mind anyway yes it is a five stage special event so that means five days to complete it and uh, of course you are given three hours of instant service and instant r d on tuning setup so here we go or here we are once again champ the big apple it's new uh it's good to be back uh, we got a tough race ahead of us today and a lot of grounds to cover before then. I'll let you and Eric get to it. So yeah, um, I've already completed this event on my other account. Um, and uh, yeah, event itself shouldn't take terribly long to complete it. So uh, as long as you can afford all the necessary upgrades or to meet the PR requirement, whether you spend gold to bring your team principal XP uh, level or the driver level, you know, but uh, that's one way to meet the PR requirement. But uh, because I am cheap, I am going to go with conserving the gold and instead spending more on the motorsport side because that I can always win back. And uh, yeah, we have uh, currently the driver's choice discount going on as well, where you get 40% off a car of your choice, which I went ahead with picking up a 2021 season NASCAR <laughs> because, you know, those cars have expiration date and, uh, you know, 40% off. It's a pretty decent offer. So, and those motorsports seasons, you know, like if you have more cars you have, obviously, um, less time it'll take because you can rotate through your 
cars and garage to make progress in that season. You know what I mean? Kind of same applies for all the motorsports category races or series. Anyway, uh, so without further ado, let's just keep on rolling here because uh, I've done enough talking from my earlier uh, posted video, both one about the just the car selection and the one that uh, specifically deals with this e-pre event. So now we got, yeah, two separate videos regarding Formula E 2021 season. You would think I like this content. <laughs> no, not really. Anyway. All right, so the first goal is the average speed goal. But before we do anything else, let's get these tuning setups going. So gearbox mapping. Uh, the cost of tuning setup, by the way, is a little less than last year's, if I uh, remember correctly. But the car's PR is higher. So that's kind of fun. And the each tuning setup, uh, the principal XP gained is 170, as you can see here. So even one tuning setup installation will be enough to level up your team principal. All right, and we already know what you need to uh, meet the PR requirement. So we'll just go through tier by tier for each um, category. So all, I guess not tier, but they call it steps, right? So with the one step across the board, you're, uh, we get a 1.2 PR point boost. So with the Rocket Venturi and the fellow bottom tier cars, the PR goes up to 57. And let's go ahead with a step two. All right. And then I will probably run through the event itself with the minimum number of tuning setups just to meet the PR requirement. But, uh, Upon completing the event, I will probably just, you know, max out, get the remaining uh, tuning setups available so I can reap the benefit in the currently ongoing uh, time trial competition. I know it's not at uh, New York City. It's at Berlin, but it's a Formula E, so I expect, I mean, a lot of the aspects of what makes a Formula E circuit is they're all street circuits more or less, right? So narrow paths, a lot of blind corners, a lot of hairpins. So we kind of know, you know, one tuning setup can kind of work in the other. At least that's my uh, assumption. And certainly would be better than going without any tuning setups. So yeah. So that's what I am going with. And as I said, since it is only motorsport dollars that it costs to max it out, why not, right? All right. And then so with the two steps across the board, eight steps total, we are up to 58.1 now, 2.3 PR point boosted. Let's go ahead and get the step three. right and suspension the final category all right and that brings PR up to 59.3 a total of 3.5 PR point boost and on to step four Brakes calibration, always the cheapest one. And suspension adjustment. All right, brings PR up to 60.4. That's a total of 4.6 PR point boost. Let's go on to max out gear back, uh, gearbox mapping. 
Formula E cars have a gearbox? Really? I find that intriguing. I thought these cars were just, uh, you know, electric motor. Electric motors require a gearbox? Aren't these all single speed cars? Huh. Okay. <laughs> I suppose it's kind of like uh, electric cars uh, needing to repair uh, exhaust pipe or something or um, like uh, one of those uh, Formula One style cars needing um, I don't know front bumper or the door repair or front windshield repair right <laughs> open air car <laughs> uh, but this is a bit more um, dramatic unless I am misunderstanding the term here which is certainly not outside of the realm of possibilities so all right, so five steps across the board. PR is up to 61.6. That's 5.8 PR point boost. Now we're um, done with the gearbox. So on to power unit optimization. We also have to max that out, of course. All right, and then brakes. We need more than six steps. Right, and then uh, suspension, we also need more than six. So now only two categories remain. We need to bring the, I guess we only need one more. Never mind. We just need to bring the brakes calibration up to step seven. Yes. And uh, six steps is really all we need for suspension. As you can see, uh, 62.7. So we are 0.1 PR point higher than what's required to win this car. And that is going to be the case for all teams, uh, all three tiers of teams. So, yeah. So that is uh, what total cost of. 2,204,500 motorsport dollars. So, shouldn't be too difficult. This is what I mean. You always want to float at least a couple of million motorsport dollars in your bank account. Now, I'm below, but uh, upon completing this event, I should be back up to about 2 million because the total earnings should be close to 300,000 in this event. And then that's not to mention the um, extra some fifty, sixty thousand that I'll be able to earn within the today's two hundred fifty thousand motorsport dollar cap that is available, since the race earning is not going to max it out. So, all right, enough talking. Let's get going. It's going to be an average speed challenge, as I've mentioned, seventy one miles per hour or 114.2 kph and uh, this is interesting looking grid it's a cup race so no battery to be concerned ourselves with but this grid uh, screen looks more like a NASCAR doesn't it all right so here we go we got a lot invested in brakes so can we go slow on braking no not really we still have to be on yeah we we'll still have to be uh very precise with the brake timing all right this is a tricky one because it's we build up so much speed heading into this hairpin. One of the more trickier part of the circuit, right? And, uh, come on. I mean, we are definitely way above the required average speed, but, you know. The struggle is real. 
as I was saying. All right, and the left hand banner turns red. Is a good spot. Uh, tight space. I, I thought he was gonna go wide, wider, allow me space like that. But uh, no, close me out. How dare he? All right, so that breaking point is like uh, Daytona Road Course outer rim chicane breaking point where I am, you know, floating a question mark over my head. This one I should know. Um, better. As you notice, I did manage to make that clean, more or less. And yes, drafting is active in this series, which is cool. Alright, so 114.2, we're way above that, which is fine. Pays off some 600 fame points for those couple of minutes of racing. 334 driver XP, which will eventually, finally, push me over the level 2, I guess, threshold. But I'm not spending gold on that, at least not yet. Uh, the 2 laps pays out 11,700. So let's keep on rolling. We got ways to go here. All right. Look at that. On the splash screen, we got Rocket Venturi and Mahindra up front and center. All right, next goal is gonna be a top speed challenge. Uh, we need to hit it twice, 201.2 kph. We know exactly where to hit that top speed. It is that uh, spot that I've been saying how it's difficult to, you know, pinpoint exact breaking point. Yeah, we got two laps to do it. So, I mean, you can do one of those like slow down uh, after you hit the target and speed back up again. I think it's uh, if you got enough tuning setups on board to complete this event like I do, you should you know, be able to pull that off. But that's uh, without, you know, pushing the um, racing line too deep into these corners. That should be the only spot that you'll comfortably be able to pull it off. And we got two laps to do it, so that's plenty of instances. Right, so even when you skid into this sector like that, that should still be enough as long as you don't scrape against the wall here. So there we go. So yeah, see? Plenty of space. You, I probably could have slowed down and sp sped back up to hit the target again, but I mean, that's no point. We got a whole lap more to go. Ooh, smooth sneaking through on the inside. All right, so a little late on the braking, I think. And that was the Jaguar Tron inspired, I feel like. All right, so let's not get stuck in traffic. And just like that, yep. Alright, so I do sense that the braking point is a little different for this car than it was when I was racing the top tier cars, which I suppose is kind of expected, but I was uh, thinking it wasn't going to be drastic enough, because, you know, both tier cars have the same braking distance, but obviously the difference between the bottom tier cars and the top tier cars is the top speed. Obviously, this one is not as fast, so um, I can brake a little bit later with this car. Not by much, but enough that I feel like there is a slight difference in uh, racing dynamic here at play. Um, 
Because when the specs are so similar, I feel like the what you perceive, you may not perceive those differences when you're actually going through these events. But uh, at least it might be in my head, but uh, I feel like I'm sensing it. All right, and it's an overtake challenge. And the contrary to my expectation, the race doesn't end upon <laughs> overtaking six opponents. You actually have to complete the race. So just something to keep in mind. Because, you know, generally in these special events, when they give you goals like that, especially this early on, that generally means as soon as you overtake, uh, your overtake counter is full, the race ends. But uh, not from my previous experience here. So two down, three down. So you would think four and two more will end the race. But uh, not from my previous run. So here's the overtake six, but nope. You still have to complete the rest of the race. I know. Surprise! I was a little surprised because uh, Golden. If you have to complete a goal, they usually say, like, overtake six opponents and finish the race or finish a lap, but uh, it didn't say that, but that's what we're expected to do here. So, later on, there's another challenge where there is something similar like this, but that one, if I remember correctly, ends as soon as you meet that particular condition that they require. Oh, that's a good line, if I may say so myself. At least in my standard, that is a pretty good line. And we are in P14, really? I guess we started at the end of the grid, so obviously gaining a few more ranks will help with the payout. That's minute 37, 170 fame points. So I guess there is some incentive to finish well, or better. 171 driver XP and 3,500 motorsport dollars. All right. So that is all there is for the opening stage of this special event, New York City e -Prix 2021. So let's pick up some bonus here. We've got 25,000 motorsport dollars, right? Uh, upon finishing the whole event, you will earn 250,000 total, but we start with the 25,000. And five gold, where total will be 50 upon 100% completion. All right, nice to see you, Eric. Nice work out there. I think that'll do for this session. Bring it in. All right, and that takes us right to stage two. You don't have to wait between stages. That's correct. So, all right, so I can, that's what I mean. You can complete this whole event within like hour and a half or so. So, pretty quick easy event for the session we're going to be monitoring your battery usage more closely cars battery level will be on the heads up display so you can understand how much energy you're using in real time which is the big thing about formula e you cannot just go flat out you do have to manage your battery power if you're not already we will uh, you will need to drive with manual acceleration enabled our default control preference is tilt B, but you can experiment with a different layout within a control menu in settings. Eric telling us how to play Real Racing 3. But anyway, uh, stage 2 will continue in the next video. So stay tuned. We'll catch you guys in the next video.